Hello, this is Sims Art. The Other Falling in the Blue, currently published on Webtoon. Today I'm going to show you how to create a webcomic from scratch. In the previous video, I showed how to set a webcomic project and how to arrange a comfortable workspace. Today I will illustrate how I sketch out a webcomic issue using Clip Studio Paint. I will show you what type of sketching brush I prefer, how I create thumbnails for the vertical format, how I give the right spacing using transitions, and how to set the lettering to give the right flow to your piece. For the sketching part, we will use the new feature located in View, On-Screen Area, to check constantly how the sketch looks on smartphone-like screen proportions. The proportions of the on-screen area can be also changed going in View, on-screen area settings. This is useful if we want to give a different spacing to our webcomic. When I sketch, I like to feel free and quickly add mid-tones and details. So I prefer a brush that allows me to control the opacity and density of the brush stroke as much as possible. I will also link the custom brushes I use for sketching in the description under the video. I like to sketch quickly and with low details first. This way I can frame the idea on the canvas before adding too many details. Here I can imagine how the panel I'm working on flows. Working on Webtoon means that the reader will constantly scroll, and this has a huge difference from a traditional comic experience. I try to take this into account while working on the thumbnails. While in a traditional comic, we have a whole group of panels on a single or double spread page. In web comics, we have the attention of the reader only on one panel at a time. And during the sketch phase, we can make sure that the design is using the space available in the best way possible. Since a large number of web comic readers uses smartphones, I like to make sure that every panel will fill the entire screen in a pleasing way and then gently lead the reader into the next one as seamless as possible. As rule of thumb, I like to avoid drawing panels floating in the empty space without any connection with the layout of the page itself. This because the sketching phase is one of the most important parts in the process. During this part, we take decisions that we will keep until the panel is complete. I would say that the most important thing in any webcomic is the pacing of the picture and the pauses. Too much in a small space and it will look confusing and cluttered. Too little and it will look empty and slow. Spacing is a great way to give rhythm to your piece and to add that beat through the entire episode. It's very easy in Clip Studio Paint to move a group of layers together once they are in the same folder. You just put everything related to the single panel inside a folder and with the Move tool you can move them around. This is a real time saver if once the episode is complete you notice that the spacing doesn't have the proper rhythm. In order to keep the pacing correct, don't forget where your speech bubbles will be. There are many ways to add speech bubbles, but I like to add them on top of the sketches so I can already visualize how the reading experience is going to be. Once the lettering is over, I export every page in JPEG for a review. In order to export, just click on File, Export Single Layer and select your preference. Then click OK. Then, when everything has been corrected, I proceed to the digital inking of the pictures. But we will discuss about this in the next video. I hope you'll find this information useful, and for any other question, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can find more about my work on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time.